You have previously defined acids and bases in terms of observable properties. Acids turn litmus red, bases taste bitter, and so on. In this lesson, we're going to look a little bit more deeply at what's going on at a particle level with acids and bases. Before we do that, let's just quickly uh, review some key ideas from earlier lessons. First, let's review what happens when ionic compounds are dissolved in water. When an ionic compound dissolves, the ions separate. Remember, that can include some hydrogen compounds too, where the hydrogen is taking the place of a metal. Here's a small sodium chloride crystal. Let's drop it in the water. So in that solution, we don't have sodium chloride particles. We have independent positive sodium ions and negative chloride ions floating around. We also saw what happened in a typical sample of water. Water doesn't just consist of water molecules. In any water sample at any given moment in time, a small amount of those water molecules will have dissociated into positive hydrogen ions and negative hydroxide ions, like so. And we saw that when that happens, we will always have an equal number of hydrogen and hydroxide ions in pure water. Okay, let's use that knowledge to get a better understanding of acids and bases. Here we have some hydrogen chloride floating above a container of water. If you look carefully, you can see that the water consists mostly of water molecules, but you can see that two of the molecules in the diagram have dissociated. They have separated into hydrogen ions, the little black circles, and hydroxide ions. Look carefully, you can see in this diagram there are two of each. Let's drop the hydrogen chloride into the water. Now, hydrogen chloride is a compound where hydrogen acts like a metal. So when we drop it into water, the hydrogen chloride molecules will break apart into separate hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Okay, let's see what we have here. The pure water, before we drop the hydrogen chloride in it, contained equal numbers of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. When we dissolved the hydrogen chloride, we added some more hydrogen ions to the mix and some chloride ions to the mix. So now there are more hydrogen ions in that solution than there are hydroxide ions. Now be careful, I'm not saying there are more positive ions than negative ions, there aren't. But all the positive ions are hydrogen ions. Only some of the negative ions are hydroxide ions. The others are chloride ions. So there are more hydrogen ions than there are hydroxide ions in the solution. And that essentially is what makes it an acid. This solution is an acid. It's generally referred to as hydrochloric acid. So now we can define an acid in a new way. An acid is a solution that contains more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. Any solution that has more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions, regardless of whatever other ions might be in there, will have all the properties of an acid. It will turn litmus red, it will taste sour, and so on. Okay, let's look at bases. Here we have a little crystal of sodium hydroxide made up of the green sodium ions and the polyatomic hydroxide ions. When we drop it in the water, like all ionic compounds, the ions separate. Once again, the water initially had equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. When we dissolve the sodium hydroxide, we've added some positive sodium ions and some negative hydroxide ions. So this solution has more hydroxide ions than it does hydrogen ions. Again, we're not saying more negatives than positives. They're the same. 
but all the negative ions in this solution are hydroxide ions. Only some of the positive ions are hydrogen ions, the others are sodium ions. So in this solution, there are more hydroxide ions than there are hydrogen ions. And that's what makes it a base. So to define a base a different way, a base is a solution that contains more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. So now we can define acids and bases a different way. An acid contains more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. A base contains more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. And therefore a neutral solution is a solution that contains equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions, like water. So there you go, a new way of thinking about acids and bases.